Hey, welcome back to The Market Investor. I'm Daniel Snyder. Thank you so much for clicking on this video to check us out. We're gonna get into alpha versus beta, right? The Greeks. Uh, alpha versus beta, what you need to know, why they matter, and if they actually matter to you. So stick around, we're gonna roll the intro and get right into it. So alpha and beta, why do they matter? Well, alpha and beta are two tools to help you determine the risk profile of your portfolio or your investments in general. So what is alpha? Alpha is the reference to a strategy on how to beat the overall market. So out on the street, you might hear at times, what is that guy's alpha? What is that mutual funds alpha? What is the hedge fund portfolio alpha? And what they're talking about is the percentage of how much somebody has beat the overall market the overall market just being a benchmark, right? And that, that benchmark can be an index such as the SPX or the Dow Jones. It's just a reference number on calculating how much better someone has done in relation to the market. So when someone has a reoccurring alpha that may be 5%, 10%, 20%, which is huge, and they have that for year over year over year, it usually leads people to start to look at them, if not give them fame status or real credibility, that they have something that uh, is almost like a third eye. It's like having the ability to read news, to gather a bunch of information, to analyze their uh, forms that they file with the SEC, the tax forms, their financials, and calculate what's gonna be the next great company and really drive returns through growth stocks or whatever it is their portfolio has. And we're talking about people like Jim Cramer, Warren Buffett, Charlie uh, Munger. I mean, these guys are all known for their ability to have great alpha and beat the market year over year over year when they ran their hedge funds. Um, and again, Warren and of course, Charlie still have Berkshire Hathaway and they are still beating the market year over year over year for the majority of the time, right? There are a few years where it goes down, but um, for the most part, they do extremely well beating the market year over year. So one other thing to note about alpha though is alpha can be either a positive number or a negative number, which is something you gotta keep in mind. Because when we talk about somebody's alpha, obviously we want it to be positive. We wanna give somebody our money in our investment portfolio or um, we want them to be able to beat the market and make us more money than if we just put it into an index fund, right? That's the whole point and that's why they get to charge their fees. But at the same time, it can be negative. Be because they are active traders and say you give your money to somebody and they are losing money and they are actually under the value of what an index fund would have produced for the year, then they have negative alpha. And typically no one likes negative alpha because that means they're losing money. You wanna find somebody with positive alpha, but alpha can also be zero. And if alpha, alpha is zero, then theoretically that person is pretty much equal to a beta 1.0, which we'll talk about in a second, but it means they just match what the market did. But this is very highly unlikely that that is an actual thing because when an alpha equals zero, but the person controlling the fund or um, the mutual fund or your portfolio, or your investments, if it's zero, they're still gonna charge you a fee for managing the portfolio. So it's not actually zero, it's not actually on par with the market, they're, it's, it's on par minus their fees, which means you actually lost money for the year. So alpha is just something to benchmark people on their ability to either beat or not beat the market. So let's move into beta. Beta is the measure of the volatility of a security or portfolio in comparison to the overall market. So when we're talking about beta equaling 1.0 on a stock, you'll, you'll look up a stock, you'll look at uh, the fundamentals, you'll go through um, pretty much all the information that you can get in one of the lines is usually beta. And beta being 1.0 means that the stock is directly correlated to the movement of the market. And this is typically to a, uh, an index, right? So if it's the S&P 500, if it's a beta 1.0 and it's uh, moving directly along, like S&P 500 goes up, the stock goes up and then vice versa, then that means it's a beta, it's directly correlated to whatever the overall index does. And it typically means that it's a lower risk for your portfolio, um, which can be good, right? So if you have something that's a beta 1.0, then it's not really generating more returns than what just the market was. So maybe you do an index fund instead, or if you like owning the shares of stock because it pays a great dividend and the dividend goes great to you, straight to you, it's the reason to have it. So just remember a 1.0 beta offers very little risk, but then again, it doesn't offer a lot of rewards. So what if beta is less than one? If it's less than one, then theoretically, that means the stock is less volatile than the overall market, meaning your portfolio is less risky with the stock than without the stock. 
So you might as well have it in your portfolio at that point. Now, not necessarily. Of course, you want to find companies that are strong and that you believe in. If you research and you understand why they're going to be here for 30 years and they're going to give you uh, dividend after dividend and continue to increase in value. So still do your due diligence. But the beta kind of gives you this insight of, okay, well, less than one. It's less risky. Like there's, you know, less risk, but again, less reward. Um, But also it could just be a value driven play. And when we say value-driven play with a low beta, we're, we're typically thinking of things like utility companies, right? Utility companies, uh, Duke Energy might be around for a long time and continue to supply electricity and continue to innovate their business and grow their business and service more people as they build more homes. And I mean, you just gotta go through the pipeline and find those companies that you're like, okay, low risk, low reward, but delivers dividends, delivers value. It's good play, throw it in my portfolio, why not? Uh, but what if beta is greater than one? If beta is greater than one, that means the stock is more volatile than the overall market, meaning that you have more risk, but potentially greater reward. For example, uh, advanced micro devices, AMD, a semiconductor microchip company that I really love, uh, has an extremely high beta. It's over two. Um, but vice versa, there's NVIDIA, which is also semiconductors, graphic cards. We've talked about it in a prior video. Um, it's beta is over one, but it's less than two. I love AMD. I love what they're doing. They've got seven nanometer chip technology. First of its first to hit production, right? But NVIDIA, I like a little bit more just cause they have a lower beta, right? So it's, it's less risky. And I still believe that they are delivering great results. They're growing. Graphic cards for the gaming sector, data centers, which are popping up, and I think the entire internet is going to be in a data center in the future. So I would pick NVIDIA over AMD, although knowing me, I'd probably own AMD as well. So when we actually talk about the exact beta number, though, say a beta is 1.2. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the underlying asset is perceived to be 20% greater volatile than the market. So if it's 1.6, then it's 60% greater volatile than the market and et cetera, et cetera. So it just means you're gonna see bigger swings compared to how an overall market usually slowly edges up or down. Not right now, because of coronavirus, but typically over time. I will say one caution that you need to be aware of is grabbing low beta stocks that are in an overall downtrend in the chart. And that is something that you'll see and we can dive into in another uh, uptrend versus downtrend in a future video. But you don't wanna get into companies that are in an overall downtrend with a low beta, it's more, you gotta remember the, the beta doesn't directly correlate to profit and loss. It, deli- it, it directly correlates to just the volatility of the stock compared to the overall index that is being compared to, which we call the benchmark. So it's not gonna say, oh, just cause it has a low beta that you're gonna start getting profits from it. That, it doesn't mean that by any means. It just helps you control the volatility. You're not gonna have, you, you can either have a lot of risk and a lot of reward or low, li- low risk, low reward, And that is just something that you're going to have to balance your portfolio with because the beta can help you understand, okay, this stock is going to increase in price quickly. Maybe I get into it now, or maybe it's not. So two quick side notes for you. One, that beta can change every year. Um, So keep that in mind and how it directly correlates to the overall market definitely changes. Um, And then two, that beta is used for stocks and not bonds. Uh, Just keep that in mind. Bonds work entirely differently. Um, so you don't really want to look at those betas. So that's alpha and that's beta alpha being the advantage or disadvantage somebody has against the overall market and beta obviously giving you the volatility versus the overall benchmark. I hope you'll remember that if alpha equals zero and beta equals one, they are not the same because alpha has an actor, active trader, active investor that of course is going to charge fees and therefore you will not be making that beta 1.0. But this is why I want you to take advantage of your portfolio, take, take advantage of your investments, become a retail trader. Now is a better time than ever. We have direct access to all the information and the ability to invest and trade just like the people do on Wall Street. It is a great, great time to get started. So if you wanna get started, uh, click on the links down in the description. I've got Robinhood, Webull, E-Trade, Fidelity. Find the one that works best for you. Uh, Keep watching the videos, check them out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you in the next one.